Well, hello, everyone. My name is Amy Gantman, and I'm the Executive Director of the Brentwood Arts Center. I thank you and welcome you to our virtual auditorium for BAC's Conversations on Art Series with our host, Meg Linton, and guest artist and architect, Jeff Shelton. Brentwood Art Center's success is due to our incredible and generous board of directors, our leadership council, donors, staff, faculty, and students who support the BAC through thick and thin. We can only do all that we do because of our generous donors who believe everyone should have access to the arts and to education. I'd like to be sure to mention that BAC's new campus in Santa Monica, located at 1625 Olympic Boulevard, is open and that our spring 2024 term is about to begin on Monday, April the 8th. The campus is very close to 18th Street Arts Center, Crossroads School, and there's a Metro stop right around the corner. We are excited to be offering in-person classes once again, and so your support is more important than ever. Now to the meat of the matter, our host, Meg Linton and I met at Otis College of Art and Design when Meg was the Director of Ex Exhibitions for the Ben Maltz Gallery, and I was Dean of Continuing Education. Our divisions collaborated on many public programs, and we are thrilled to bring Meg's love and respect for the artists to BAC. Meg has been visiting artist studios for well over 20 years in her various roles as director and curator of contemporary art spaces in Southern California. Currently, Meg is lead producer on a documentary film about feminist performance art in Los Angeles in the 1970s and 80s called Acting Like Women, directed by Sherry Galke. She is working on an exhibition about the artist Keith Julius Puccinelli that opens September 2024 at UC Santa Barbara, writing a novel and, of course, conversing with Jeff Shelton for the BAC this afternoon. I'd like to welcome Meg Linton. Thank you, Amy. It's so great to be here. And um, I really appreciate uh, sharing this Friday lunchtime hour with you and our fabulous audience. We're so grateful to the BAC and the anonymous donor who makes uh, the conversation on art series possible and available to our community for free. Thank you to the whole BAC team who works behind the scenes to bring our monthly online program to life. Before I introduce our guests, I do have the usual housekeeping. We are recording today's presentation and we ask that you please mute your microphones and turn off your video. Um, it help, helps avoid any um, unwanted uh, static or feedback. So during the conversation, if you have any questions, please type them into the chat box and I will either work them into the conversation or I'll save them and we'll get them answered at the end. Um, also in the chat box, you'll see that I've put some information about um, Jeff Shelton, our guest today, uh, for you to save and peruse on your own. I've also included directions on how to save the chat so you can um, look at that material later. We are honored to have architect, designer, and artist Jeff Shelton with us today. He and I know many of the same people from Santa Barbara, and I've admired his work for years, but we've really never met until now. So I'm thrilled he accepted our invitation because his work is an absolute delight. Jeff is a native Santa Barbarian who studied architecture at the University of Arizona, worked in Los Angeles for a number of years before returning to his hometown in the mid-90s to open his own studio where he is, has cultivated his aesthetic style while making every building a distinctive and exceptional experience. He celebrates the handmade, the personal, and the community through his work, which all starts with a location, hours of keen observation, knowing the rules, a blank piece of vellum, and a pencil. Then the magic happens. So Jeff, welcome. Thank you. Great yeah, to be here. Yeah. So we're just going to launch in and start looking at your images. So this is your studio, right? Yes, that's where I am right now on uh, in the back alley of a small little street in Santa Barbara. That's great. And how long have you been there since 94? 
Uh, I've been in this building since 98. I was at another office location and uh, moved down to this old carriage house, uh, 1880s carriage house, uh, right in the middle of town, actually. So it's a great location and a fun little building. That's great. And this is your space? Yeah, it's it was a dirt floor. A guy used to make street signs for the city in this place, uh, and he did all the carvings on the building. And so this is this is my space, and we have other spaces for other people in the op in the office. But I keep this uh, with all my current projects up and in my face at all times. So you like everything really close. I like to be able to see things so they don't escape my mind because something else will fill that spot. So I definitely like to have things out there as they're developing and um, I will eventually see if it works or it doesn't work and can fix it. Mm -hmm. Do you work on multiple buildings at a time or is it really kind of a one of the one at a time process? Well, unfortunately, unfortunately, I work on a lot of buildings at the same time. Mm -hmm. In the ideal world, yeah, it would be a a building that just comes in pure and clean and <laughs> goes through the whole process, but that just never happens. Rarely, maybe, maybe once happened, but it doesn't happen. I'm not in charge of so many parts of the approval process that you can't time things. So you just take on good clients and and move on and try mm -hmm. to fake yourself out about what you're supposed to be doing each day and um, dive into each project. I do like to keep them, stay focused on one. And then when I get to a point, skip to the other one. Yeah. So in looking at the studio, you've got lots of models, but you also, you know, before we started today, we were talking about model building. Um, but also you sculpt, you design all kinds of things. You paint, you draw. Right. And model building is one of those things I think you, well, I always thought you were supposed to do it growing up as an and then becoming an architect in school. And I just didn't stop. I see a lot of, I don't see a lot of models out there anymore. I try to, every, every building gets a model, especially every downtown building, let's put it that way. And it helps tell the story for everybody. So I, I'm going to continue, continue to do that. Plus, as you know, any architects in this field or who are listening, uh, how the the bureaucracy is 95% of this business. And so it building the model gives you this great, you know, release back into the fun part. Mm -hmm. um, as far as everything else, yes, I design tiles and lamps and and whatever. It, the, there's always something on the board. There's always something on a piece of paper in front of me. And there's always a a blank to fill. So I do that posters, graphics, try, keeps me out of trouble. <laughs> Good. Yeah, I'm last person to use stamps, I think here, uh, ink stamps on everything. So uh, I, I see you're showing showing those there. Um, yeah. That the model on the right is a is a funny one because it's that's a one inch equals a foot model. It's about four and a half feet tall. And there's a eighth inch scale one right next to it. Um, so as the longer the project goes, I just keep building models until they approve the project. Oh, that's that's amazing. Do people help you build the bottles or are you just doing it? Well, whoever's in the office will do it. Uh, it's more of who's got the time to do it. Can we all break away? Everybody wants to break away to do the model. So yeah. sometimes we'll just stop and I'll do it and it'll get us all off the... Well, they're on the computer, unfortunately, uh -huh. and we'll get them off that back into back into having fun. So, but I will often just start cranking out the model. Also, these sketches. These are these are sketches. So when you start a project, before you, this is after I really studied the site, et cetera, but. These will just pop up at home, watercolors of something I've been working on. So you sort of just have to get that out, uh, right or wrong, and just keep painting, keep drawing. These are watercolors. Keep drawing. You don't know where you're going to stop, but you have to get it out. 
right? I have to get it out. So were, are these all buildings that were eventually built? No, this or is, co this is Coda, yeah, sorry. This is Coda oh. Street Studios. Oh, okay. So it's white if you see it now, and I don't know if you have pictures of it, but but still, I, I don't let anything stop me from doing what I might want to do or just try it. Mm -hmm. The city ultimately in this neighborhood wasn't keen on having that much fun. And um, so I end up end up with a white on a lot of these buildings, which actually is pretty nice. Uh, all the rest of the colors can can well, pop. It's so nice that they allow you some color. So, yeah. well, they they do. I because they have a lot of rules in Santa Barbara. There are rules, but I think I'm reading the rules correctly, and mm -hmm. and. <laughs> And maybe some people don't, but I have to be, I'm grateful for all the things that they've let me do. And I I believe I'm just reading the rules I, I, uh, more thoroughly than, than, than some people. I think we're, we're giving, trying to give these buildings joy. And, and there's nothing that says that there shouldn't be color and delight. And I'm just going to try to balance it out there and put it on a, put it on a building. Fantastic. So with this, I mean, how did you get the clock in there? I've always wondered, like, was that something the client wanted or was that something you added in or group process? Well, clients are the key to all this. And so, right. the, so when I get a client, it's, it's uh, how you sit, they we come in here and sit here and that's, that's where the buildings has a future or it doesn't have a future. And so I pick clients that I see there's a future in this and why are they hiring me? Mm -hmm. uh, this building happens to be, uh, I, I obviously had been to Spain that year uh, from uh, in Sevilla. There's some buildings like this, that color, that band. So I just let that explode off the, off the page to see what I could get. This client was a trap. When I started on this one, he's a, a kind of a luxury travel agent. And so I thought it'd been great to put a clock on there and, um, I just mix the numbers up. It's it's a funny story. The inspector uh, gave us a uh, red tag us because the numbers were wrong, but I showed him on the drawings. If you look closely, they were just like this. Yeah. So as long as it's okay on the drawings. Well, I would have. <laughs> they approved. It. Yeah. You you try to stick with the drawings, but if I wanted the numbers like this, I'd have gone back and got it. Got it. Yeah. Got it. That's funny. This is that Coda Street Studio project. We saw those colored water, those water colored watercolors, colorful watercolors, and um, once again, a, a fun project. And and what you know, we haven't got into here is the people building it. I can't draw any of this without all those the the whole the guild that has developed around uh, around this office. And that lets me make these drawings and draw those doors. You can't draw big doors like that if you don't know who's going to build it and who's going to want to try to figure it out with you. I jumped back to this because this has so much wrought iron. And again, you are you have a community of the, what they call them, the Merry Band of Artists. And um, but a lot of that, a lot of those people are your family, too. So it's David Shelton who's done a lot of your Rod iron work, right? Right. I had a, a, a client uh, on not one of these buildings, but he was describing in a magazine. He said, first the bulldozers come, then the merry band of artisans show up. <laughs> and uh, so I use that and kind of jokingly call everybody that. And uh, it's just a fantastic group of people that Upton Construction starts, it started with Dan Upton, um, who understands how good everybody is and figures out how to work with everybody because as you know artists aren't maybe dialed in the paperwork like everybody else and and need their space to be able to create things so yes the iron work is by my uh one of my brothers uh, da david shelton so i i need to just make sure the things the steel work is passes code and and uh, structurally sound, uh, but I get this stuff going and he turns it into magic. So he can take my little sketch 
whether it's an intricate sketch or a small little sketch and turn it into magic and make it better than give it life, make it better than it would have been if I'd have drawn it and handed it to anybody else. So it's a one more layer that that comes out of that. And then yeah. the rest of the people, you know, and we have artisans throughout you pick, pick the uh, part of a building and we've got some person who's got a, who's got a love for that craft. Mm -hmm. Do you have people coming and now wanting to work with you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we do. And, and that's good. That's great. Because yeah. first of all, well, some people die, some people retire. That's usually the way it goes. And, um, and so we continually look for people. What I don't do is if someone comes in with something I don't throw their thing into a building. I sort of mm -hmm. put them in the in the palette. And then when I'm thinking and I know what they do, I can feel confident to do something to bring them on, on board. Mm -hmm. So that's it's it's some people want to come in and make it make a statement. I say, no one's making a statement. Not, I'm not making a statement. The building is sort of takes over. After I get that going, the building takes over here. And we have to respond to what is needed. And if any adjustments need to be made, we make them. Yeah, I was thinking, I was actually thinking about that um, from an article I read that you had kind of said a similar thing. And because um, I'm writing a novel right now. And so it's kind of at a certain point, the character tells you where they need to go. <laughs> you know, whether you want them to go there or not, they just, you have to follow it to kind of see it to its hopefully a magnificent end. Well, you have to, and you have to re also know that some idea you had and got approved doesn't work anymore. Right. So you have to be able to throw that idea out and realize that got you to where you are, but you need to, excuse me, to, you need to move on. Yeah. And then also on your end, you have to also be willing to put the time back in to go and get other further approvals and so forth i imagine well that is a problem because yeah we do and and we um and i don't really have any problems i have not had any problems going back and getting them reapproved after final but we don't we always go back and and do it if the building needs something we don't just uh not do it because we don't have time to do it we, right. we we make the fix and figure out how much money we're going to lose mm -hmm. you know, on, on on certain things or how we can most cleverly get get to where we're going but the building sort of the building becomes the god here you know in, in in one sense is that we're that's where we're going and we're going to get there somehow right we have a question that came in about this particular image. Um, they want to know if the ceiling was inspired by the worship space at the mission. Well, not, not directly. Uh, it was inspired by great celebrating ceilings throughout history in, in many places. So it's more of celebrating that moment and honoring you're going into this place. It could have been a lot of ways to celebrate that. Uh, Kara Cummings, uh, so I got that, those designs approved. And I had a friend, Kara Cummings, who did all those paintings and I did, I painted mm -hmm. all the beams. So, you know, we, we, we get it approved, the idea approved, and then we have a little bit more fun with it. Mm -hmm. And you designed the light fixture? The chandelier that's hanging down? This light fixture my brother designed. Oh. I had another one uh, in there uh, on, on the first approval. And then Dave, uh, David would, uh, came up, Jeff, I got a better idea. And he did have a better idea. Uh, it was with our great neon friend who's no longer with us, Juan De La Cruz. He did that neon. He's, he's from Tucson. I met him when I was in college. And um so ter ter terrific lamp my brother came up with there. And uh, if you're ever there and uh, and it's on, it's it's just magic. It is beautiful space. There's a building up in up in the hills here for a client that came in and I did a little sketch 
of something and they told me to loosen up a little bit. And um, <laughs> that's so, a nice directive. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> Best client ever here. And so this was uh, um, just a fun little project I call the Oak Tree House. It sort of moves around like an oak tree moves around in the forest. And, and you have to really use color this time. Yeah, up in the hills, you can you can have a bit more bit more fun as far as color goes. But it hides. It hides in the hill. It hides in the woods here. It's it's uh, very very yeah. fun project. Great client. Yeah, so perfect green. So I oh, so I do have a question about this in terms of you know the location is always so key. How long do you how long do you get to spend time looking at and being on the site? And I'm assuming you walk the site and are you there different times a day to kind of see things or? Yeah, the projects. Once again, they start with the client here. And that makes it possible. The client is why these buildings work. The other part, like I said, is with the contractor and all those people we work with. But the other part that you have, you need to work with and don't look at it like a hindrance, but look at it as um, just basic rules that are here for maybe good reasons or maybe not good reasons, but working with the, with the, uh, city building codes and, and mainly the uh, municipal codes and then working with the neighbors. So yeah, the first thing we do is go to the site, get get there as, as uh, often as possible, mornings, evenings, middle of the day, different times of the year. The longer we have to look at the site, the more we will understand it. And that gets you started. If you start without doing that, you sort of well, you could end up having some false idea that you try cramming onto a site. So mm -hmm. definitely try to get as much time up at that site. And or if they've already lived there, you can ask them about certain qualities of the site. Understand what the neighbors are going to see or be upset about. Mm -hmm. You you try to try to get as much pos as in there as possible, and at the same time understand the the building uh municipal code is is the main main issue up here in Santa Barbara. Building codes are the same all all through call, uh, California. Right. And when you look at these, do you do you feel? I mean, there must be a certain amount of satisfaction, but do you see things that should have been a little different or? Because I know sometimes when I make things before I submit the file, it's like, oh, I wish I had gotten that. Or do you see the things that yeah. didn't happen? I, I do, but I've learned uh, to know that I did the best possible or made the best possible uh, decisions along the way. Mm -hmm. I, I really work on those decisions not to make to make a well, well thought out decision each time because they add up in millions and millions of decisions here. Right. So, uh, you know, as you get older, it gets better. And also my wife got tired of me complaining about little things on buildings and like, this works, you know, right. I, I could go out there and point out every little tiny little thing. But the fact is I'm grateful for everything that did happen on a building. Mm -hmm. And if something is, quirky now it's a fun little quirky thing that didn't right. work out but it's certainly not you know don't don't kick yourself for everything right if it is a big thing though i will have fixed it before okay <laughs> during construction yeah. if if there is a big thing we will fix it right we've had a number of things where dan upton would say jeff you get one special card in each building and, uh, <laughs> that's you know, nice that was a screw up now let's go fix it and so and um those guys also will fix it they they get to be just as good critics as as i as i will as mm -hmm. i try to be and they'll fix things that they know aren't right right it seems like it's, you've created such a supportive environment that's all these that's talented the people 
that you know if, if i was going to give any advice which i i don't know if i'm qualified to give any advice to anybody but surround yourself with a with people you want to be with and want to work with and don't want to fight they want to come up with solutions and who can who can be with you at the worst of times as you know it's easy to be, be be on board at the best of times but who can hang and and be productive and helpful at the worst of times and i have an, a just so many people around me that make it possible mm -hmm. they're all delightful people and now you know a lot of these people i've been working with for 30 years and mm -hmm. with kids now or might be working with them so that is you you can't look past that because none of this happens this just stays on the paper if you don't somehow create that right this was a interesting project there where is this one is it's it down in uh, montecito creek cold spring creek area there and I designed a remodel of a house right here. And then the day I turned the plans in, the flood came and wiped it off. Oh, no. You know, a lot of people died up in this little area. Um, 24 people in the in the flood. This was back in 18, 19. That was so devastating. 18, yeah. And so when we put this building back, uh, I said, let's make a round building that the flood can go around. It's concrete, goes down 25 feet. And the the woman, my client, is just delightful and could live in a 26-foot circular tower, a room on top and a room on the bottom. That's amazing. Yeah, very, very fun building to do. Maybe not to build. The round buildings are not easy. Mm -hmm. But it somehow stayed very pure the whole way. Um, I kept the round. I didn't break it. And is this is the stone all from the environment or the property? The stone is from right under it because we had to dig out for a basement. And all that stone, this is a creek bed. So all that stone is right there. We didn't bring stone in from anywhere. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, but very, very uh, interesting job. These jobs were, of course, the one on the right is the El Zapato, and it's called that because when I'm finished, it looked like a big high-top tennis shoe. <laughs> and, um, crazy sight. Uh, not crazy sight. It's, it's for Santa Barbara. It's a kind of a little busy street, 60 by 50 lot mm -hmm. parking. You, you know, around here, you figure out parking first, and then you figure out what you got left. And that's uh, that's generally the game plan here. It, parking has changed recently, but that is how you know what you're going to be building here. Mm -hmm. My goal here on that one was to save that tree. So I moved, I had an exit next to the tree there, or in, entry, exit, egress, and uh, and just had as much fun as I could the, the, the whole time. The one thing I want to say, we didn't really talk about design but try to 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 address the ground and the, and and uh it's a, sort of a traditional idea here we address the ground the base and then the sky so all my buildings i want to to when you look at it it frames the sky it, it celebrates that sky it sort of ends goes into the sky with joy so mm -hmm. that's one thing you'll see in common i i don't think i've really mess that one up too many times and it's just a great eye it just it just makes your decision making sort, sort of simplifies it i want to be joyful as i hit the sky so that's what you start to see and if you look at the rest of the buildings even on the one on the left the eaves needed to be fireproof so we tiled them with these birds flying in the sky a traditional shaped building but still uh took advantage of the problem of making it fireproof uh, and 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 use tile to do that. But also the colors you put against our, you know, our blue sky that is so incredible. You know, that's why 
so many artists have, you know, talked about the light out here in California. And um, if it also helped, you know, in standing at the bottom of your buildings, looking up, you get this amazing, almost kind of Terrell experience sometimes with the colors that you put up there. Um, it's really a phenomenal. Well, thanks. You know, that's you know, and it's, and they, the bottom. The sky changes. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, that it's just, it's almost like your buildings kind of hug the, the change of the color and the light that goes by. It's really nice. The, what one part of a building uh, is you often will see an elevation of a building in, and that's one, that's sort of a, 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 a perspective you will never see mm -hmm. on elevation. So I try to think of it as, and the three dimensions coming out. So for what you're talking about there is what do you see from the sidewalk? And mm -hmm. how, how can you how can you come out and frame frame that view straight up? And knowing that as you do that, it's also going to take care of if you use the shape and the perforations, it'll take care of shadows coming back down when the sun hits it from from the top. So yeah. you sort of starts starts snowballing taking care of itself the building if you start to play with the sky and the sun like that mm -hmm. yeah and it's been you know and your yeah your buildings are changing this the you know skyscape of the of santa barbara which is really nice when you walk downtown it helps uh, it helps it undulate and move it's really kind of an incredible experience I noticed that the last time I was walking downtown a few months ago. It's a good thing to look at, and yeah. you'll get to, you'll get pretty discouraged if you start looking, and which really bothers me. I think that's something. If you go to an old town in Europe or Mexico or some old town, you'll you'll start to see that the skyline has a, some gracefulness, you know, and 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 excitement and. We we started looking here in Santa Barbara, and there's not enough attention paid at that at that edge, mm -hmm. um, at, at that edge, and and uh, I think that could just as a an idea for review boards, you know, but why, why not pay more attention as the build as your build as your city goes up and hits the sky? Well, why don't we pay a little more attention to that? Well, hopefully, you're changing that, <laughs> helping them focus a little. And what about this building? Because this this refers to another building that was in Santa Barbara. There was a, I can't remember his name right now. Yeah, there's a Sanford Darling was a yeah. a man and uh, down on Rancheria Street. And as a kid, uh, my brothers and my family, we'd go down there and take a look at his building. And I think my brothers knew the guy, mm -hmm. David and, and Ron and and, and Steve and uh, they're they're 10 12 years older than me so they would they knew the guy and and so he was sort of a kind of a you know we we not worship this guy but they, they, this is an idol this is this is the kind of guy, people we like is people who paint their buildings and he painted his whole house his screens his refrigerator his roof tile everything with uh places he'd been and it apparently mm -hmm. been to Japan, a lot of Mount Fuji's, um, a lot of stuff from the um, from Asia, um, and uh, and the Indonesia, and uh, other other things, of course. But so when when a client came to me with this vacant lot, he said, "What do you want to do?" And there was other buildings, kind of the shape. I said, "Let's do this." Let's. The next day, he came in, and I had a building with paintings all over it. And that's he said, let's awesome. do it. He didn't, he didn't question anything. Oh, that's amazing. He, he did say, how are you going to get it approved? And I said, oh, that's my job. So, yeah. and I went in on a Wednesday and, and uh, a number of and architects and landscape architects on the board saw what I was doing and they said, why not? Let's do it. It's a great part of town to do it. And I ended, oh, that's fabulous. ended up getting 300 painters to add a painting uh, many, many added many paintings mm -hmm. how um so when you were growing up i mean were your were your parents artists or designers or were 
Were you just inspired by the people that were around in Santa Barbara or? Yeah, my parents, I was the fourth boy and mm -hmm. my oldest brother's 12 years older. So they were the kings. My brothers were the kings of my life and my, and they were all artists. Uh, they were, they're pa uh, painting, sculpture, uh, music, uh, you know, then my brother is a writer, uh, sculptor, teacher, music, all, all these guys do this stuff. I thought that was just what you did. So it wasn't mm -hmm. a, we didn't do anything else. My dad is a jazz musician. Uh -huh. uh, he worked at Westmont, but his, his love and, and what he did earlier was a jazz musician. So music was always playing. He was always on the piano or the trumpet uh, every day in some way. And then my mom was the artist of making it all work. So, yeah, so I was extremely fortunate and living in that world, uh, not knowing, you know, modern art was all I knew existed. Right. From 1960 on, let's put it that way. And um, and then we lived in a great community next door, Mountain Drive, Beatniks, craftspeople, things like that. So plenty of plenty of opportunity to see, to be around uh, people who made things. Right. Yeah. That's fantastic. So let's talk about the ablets because this is kind of a important project. Yeah, well, I was working on a project just on the same block, mm -hmm. tiling a blanket on one of these tiled blankets I've done. And the, these people came up to me and said, uh, we've got a lot. I said, I'm too busy. I'm too busy right now. And they said, it's 20 by 20. And I said, I'll take that job. <laughs> <laughs> I got off the ladder, went over there with a six pack of beer and it was a 20 by 20 lot sitting there around the block. And I said, you know, to these guys, Neil, Neil and Sue, I said, let's, uh, let, let me see what I can do. And ultimately I said, don't pay me unless I get a permit because I can't recommend you go forward on this project. So I did, I took the drawing in on the left here. That was that's that's the drawing I took into the planning department, and expecting to get the next day actually, oh, and, wow. <laughs> and, and, and expecting to get shot down. And the the, the people there uh, told me they they said this might work. You just go talk to transportation. Little things like that kept the door open, and so I just kept going in. That's amazing. I kept going in. I went. I took it to the uh, HLC. Uh, historical landmarks committee and they didn't shoot it down they scratched their head uh they they just they were kind of what are you doing and where and but i remember they they pushed it forward i remember i uh, remember edward chella on the um on the yeah. board said said uh jeff if it was someone else bringing this in i i, I would shoot this thing down but we, i want to see this so i mean i i these people took a chance here and it didn't ruin the city skyline. Like some people would say it's kind of quietly sits back down, a, down a little alley. This is how it happens. Just, you can't, once you start this thing, you, it, you can't get it out of your head. Now is that a lounger chair on a stairway. I was working on that. Yeah. <laughs> let me see. I was working on a, Oh, we couldn't get a, we couldn't get a, a elevator in there. And uh, so that was one idea that didn't fly. Okay. <laughs> most, of my, most of my ideas don't fly. So I'm not worried about that. All you need is the one, right? So you need to end up with the one that flies. Yep. And, and uh, these, these are drawings. Those were what uh, landmarks approved right there. Uh, I believe there might there are a couple more, I, but very close to it. But that's how I take plans in. I still, this was 20 years ago, but I still take plans in not dissimilar to this, a uh, pencil, pencil or ink uh, section there. Mm -hmm. uh, just work things out. Things get drawn over and over again. This, uh, some, some people have asked me, how, how do I know it's going to work? Well, I've drawn it a million times right. or, or many, many, many times. And, uh, very 
careful to, to make sure things are going to be working out here or could be solved. Interior elevations, things like that, everything just gets worked out in some way. May we change it during that process? Yes, but at least we get very close to the situation. Were there any, well, when you were constructing this, were there any like big pivot moments that you remember? This one? Yeah. Well, so one guy was uh, appealing everything I did. He'd throw dead rats at the project and <laughs> appealed the way he thought my energy calculations were all the way to city council. So th that was, it was a mess. It was a mess. I, I look at all these projects and try to look with all the joy, but occasionally you get to remember the pain and yeah. the struggles you'd go through. Once again, we had the clients that, that with the, the stomach to, to put up with this and, and to pursue, to go forward. Here's and ideas. Besides kind of like the outside challenges kind of coming in with, with the community or whatever, but what, are there, are there like any, you know, successful design pivots? Like, well, this wasn't working. So the crew came and we changed it and made it this way. Or is that always kind of happening? First of all, it always happens. The funny thing about this building that we were looking at now is there were very few options because it was 20 by 20, then the building's 19 by 19, walls were a foot thick, so we're 17 by 17, minus the stair, you're 17 by 13. So there weren't many choices I had on this one. Right. On another building, you might find a lot of different pivots. But what I've always said about this building that was so fun is there were no pivots. It was, we're going to put the stair here and we're going to build a building. And there might be some exterior stuff going on. But unlike yeah. maybe other buildings we've looked at, those have a lot of other options that people can push you around on. Right. This is a... This so how is, long did this project take from start to finish? It took three weeks of floor. So that that got us up to the uh, fourth floor, but the roof, and then it just slowed up all this towers and things like that. So it took us 60 weeks to do the whole project. Mm -hmm. But see these shapes here, you can see I I drew, I drew them. If you look on the mi lower middle, mm -hmm. Dan, Dan puts the plywood up and calls me and gives me a bunch of Sharpies. And I, I draw these shapes on the, on the form and then he'll come back and form it to to, oh. to find that i draw so the kind shape. Of block, blocks it out and then cuts it yeah. out okay but once again this is this is dan making this kind of idea and upton construction possible they right. have, they have joy in figuring this out as well as it, instead of just complaining mm-hmm Yeah, and this, this dome, I just, this is like part of the skyline of Santa Barbara now. I mean, it's, it's really recognizable. It was, once again, this, this was Juan and his father-in-law, Rosario, did the tile work and they called me up as just a concrete dome. And I drew mm -hmm. the Sharpie. <laughs> I drew, <laughs> I drew the, the um, zigzags, uh, leaves kind of. Uh, on one side and they tiled it and a week later he called me back and I did the next side you know so four weeks I believe this was that they would uh they would put these tiles kind of a mosaic they're all cut that's amazing all the tile comes from you know California pottery down in LA mm -hmm. and all those fun shapes you see only because those guys will come up here and I can just drop draw on a piece of paper send them a pdf uh, give them a you know, a mock-up and they make it for me and bring it up the next week. Incredible. Well, and also just to have that kind of trust in each other is really amazing. You know, people want to have fun and enjoy mm -hmm. doing their work. And too often that it becomes a nine to five job or a seven to three job for con contractors. But even that these these guys down at Ty Sean and Desmond and, and the whole crew down there love having fun and they like the challenge. 
Everyone mm -hmm. likes the challenge. The planning department likes the challenge. The building department likes the challenge. Everybody wants to be part of something fun. Fun is a human and fun and enjoying and enjoying life is if that's what we're all here for. So right. all these people, there's an opportunity for everyone to have fun here. Yeah. I love the little face and the tile. Well, that was Andy Johnson, who mm -hmm. I grew up with, was born with, basically. And um he the the tile guy called me up one said jeff i got a problem and i came over and i called andy and andy left the job he came down 10 o'clock measured it with his hands three o'clock he comes back with this already baked limestone stuck it in there never measured a thing stuck it in there and Juan finished up oh that's incredible yeah yeah it is incredible that i got i get to work with these people Another guy I went to school with, Santa Barbara High School. He uh, got this got this wood from a a orchard in San Ynez, this uh, walnut, and I drew this shape on the ground. And I asked him. He said, "Oh, no problem. You know these guys know they know what they're doing, and no problem." And he made that shape, and I had to talk him into connecting them. That was the hard part. The flat mm. part was simple for these people but this connection was really the art of all that and um, right. connected them from uh, the ground floor up to the up to the roof so it snakes all the way up the four stories it snakes as one piece they're all glued together mm. it, it, is a, it is a work of art yes and uh, then my brother i changed the design for the the for the guardrail below it uh yeah, because we had it more complicated steel, but once I saw the steel, uh, the, the, the how beautiful the wood wood was, I didn't want to mess with it. So we just well, and the the juxtaposition of the two materials is really nice. Yeah, we just did not Perfect. want to fight it at all. Yeah, just show it off. So you've done everything, but what about the, like the furniture? Do you help select the furniture or make suggestions or? Well, on, on, on some projects, um, on some projects, not, not in this one. I, I did the interiors because they wanted a blue stove. That was the only thing they wanted was a blue stove. So I worked my way around the whole building with tile and everything because <laughs> of their blue stove. This was a table they had from, from Baja uh this lamp these lamps i designed you know i did a sketch for hold on one second yep <laughs> um the uh these lamps uh i did it here's how we work look at those sketches over there mm -hmm. that's what i give my brother and this is what i end up with so who's the lucky who's the lucky one here well the clients are but i'm sort of fortunate to be able to to have some little sketches like this, right? Uh, be able to get something. And do the the people the the client do they still own the building? Uh, they do. They they we didn't get to put an elevator in here. Um, the so they ended up moving to a place with an elevator across the street. And they rent this out sort of as a, oh, I got it. I got it. Uh, it's it's a short term rental now. Mm -hmm. So some people rent it for a short time and uh, for a year, or some people rented the whole thing. Oh, wow. And so, what's this project? This is a new project. Um, this is called, I call this equestrian. It's up on Equestrian Avenue, mm -hmm. uh, just in, about six blocks away here. Um, the It's a, a mixed use building that has uh, two units on above it, a main unit and an ADU unit. And we just got approval for it. So this will be starting construction in a couple months. Was this the model you were walking down the street? That's oh, right. This, this okay. is the model. On my, this is the model on my head. It's got this pomegranate dome there, 
that uh, is going to be fun to figure out once again with cult with a uh, uh, California pottery. Uh, it's got crazy deep red uh, pomegranate uh, shingle tiles. So I drew the best I could. I drew them the best I could. Then we'll go down to LA and try to figure out how these how these can be, actually be used. That's fantastic. Yeah. So for people in our audience, if you follow Jeff on his Instagram feed, he was had a little video of him walking the model down to the to the meeting to get his approval. So um, it's going to be a really exciting project. We do have a comment from Pamela Smith, and she says, I love the dreamlike quality your buildings give to downtown Santa Barbara, but I'm still hoping you'll have a client, um, a faith community or a community center who invites you to build a true public building. So have you have you done a lot of public buildings or are they mostly not not enough? I I I agree. I some of these houses, I love doing these houses, but I the public buildings is I would I would love to do uh, because mm -hmm. um I try to do a building that that has some delight and fun in it and and in the amount of people who who it could enjoy it is increased and i actually love the way kids come to my, my office and have their their moms have them call me or they bring them in and and the number of kids that enjoy this so uh, i it, it also turns uh younger people on to you know buildings should have excitement and and energy and so yes uh you know I, i've sort of got a public building i've been a people's park a public park i've been working on privately there is no direction for it but yeah. it's sort of the same idea of yes it, I, I think a, a public project uh some of my buildings would be better pro public projects than a private house maybe yeah I think that I mean just to have that well and also the way you work too I mean I think it the way you have this community of artisans that you work with and you and the way you work with even the building commission and it's it's, it's becoming like the I mean you're you're part of Santa Barbara and it seems like it would be really nice to have a public facility that everyone could enjoy and come and experience your work. I'm working on the uh, the underpass right now on State Street, which is a small, you know, it gets you under the freeway uh, in a more delightful, more delightful experience. So yeah, it's it'll be done next next year this time. Uh, half of it will be done this summer, I believe. But the tile work is fun, and, and the iron work is uh, by my brother. So, um, and 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 Upton Construction is also working on that one. So that's going to be a fun, fun thing to get a get a taste of, a, a taste of, uh, of of fun and delight in the middle of the town. That'll be really nice. Yeah, because it is a little somber going under the underpass. It's, it's terrible. Was the word. Yeah. <laughs> So this is, this is, you do the tile, you do the lighting, you do some furniture, you kind of. This was a project on uh, El Hardin and the client asked me to, ask me and then other people around me to do furniture. So my brother, Andre Reno, um, a num number of different people did a uh, number of different projects. So these are some of my chairs. Looks like uh, my brother's little table right there. Mm -hmm. that's fun that was uh I, I would do anything to love to be able to do all the furnishings too that go in a building so this was yeah. uh this was one of them that did work tile work is uh in my spare time i'll always be doing some pattern that intersecting pattern that um that can move in many directions most of my patterns move in four directions it can be flipped around any way you want uh, these are ants over at El, El uh, Andalus. Some and Irish. And you do the fabric as well, right? We do fabric too. I don't know if we have any photos, but uh, the um, these these started out as fabric uh, back uh, years ago, maybe forty years ago. And then as I got into buildings, it was uh, really worked as tile. And then we've gone back to fabric with with the same designs. Nice. These are done in uh, Mexico. Uh, in Vietnam now, the, these oh. these tiles on the left, uh, these cement tiles. There's an example of my uh, ironwork my brother does. So you, you can't you can't draw that. No, and the, he did the gates at the Ka right, the community arts workshop. Yeah, 
Yeah, which is really wonderful to drive by and see those gates. Just his work alone, you, you know, is you can barely you can't understand it. A, a to put it all in one piece, it all reacts to the building perfectly. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. It doesn't fight it. It doesn't try to be something else. It just works right with what we drew. So right. And are you working on any international projects? Or are you just mostly in California? Or yeah, <laughs> just in California. Mm -hmm. Am I? Yeah, just in California. <laughs> but you it's, do it's, traveling, right? You, do you do I, take breaks to go travel? Well, we have a little a place, a, a small office in southern France that we go and just hide and get a lot of work done. And um, mm -hmm. so set up there so we can sort of take three months to do design work or whatever type of work is, uh, is I could bring over there. But it's yep. these jobs I just take over there and kind of hide. So uh, hide and, and get a lot of work done. That's nice. We have a question from Allie Wiggins. Um, thank you for sharing your delightful work, process, inspiration, and success. Um, I'm curious as to who you work with in the office, and specifically, have you offered learning positions or internships at your practice in the past? Well, we've got two people, Maddie and James, that work with me now, and uh, and Maddie's my daughter, and um, it's a great great team best team i've had uh they we all know what we're doing and know where we're going and are technically uh just right right on so it takes so many so so the communication has never been better so it's just mm -hmm. very small as far as interns i have had interns and uh, sometimes i'm set up for interns sometimes i'm not I actually need a bigger space bigger spaces so, uh, you know, I've had over the years, I've had lots of interns or people from school coming in for months at a time or stuff like that. That's nice. And then do you do you do tours of your studio? I know you've we've got a image coming up of the map that you've made of kind of a walking tour of Santa Barbara that you can do of um, your buildings. I give well, tours come through here mm -hmm. and. So people come here and I, and if I'm not in a meeting, I let them come in and talk to them for five minutes, whatnot, stuff like that. Awesome. We have, uh, uh, there's a big, there's a big open house coming up on May 16th at my office, but uh, there's tours that I give, uh, I, some charitable tours I give, but there are also tours uh, that for just my buildings uh, once or twice a week. Oh, nice. Yeah. And what are we looking at here? Well, a lot of graphics, uh, drawers and drawers full of thousands of posters and events that take place in our neighborhood. Uh, these are a few of them. I'm just seeing which ones we put up here. Those happen every year in some way uh, for the last 20 years. Some of these have been happening like the pot war since the 50s and Mayfair, I think mountain drive events mm -hmm. so i just like doing these posters they're fun to sort of it's fun to do something without regulations <laughs> and a little more immediate <laughs> gee, well, yeah just just nobody telling me anything i'll just draw the thing and print it and stick it out there in the on, on you know up at the mailboxes or or send it out online okay. so i do that in my sleep like this is the kind of stuff i do for fun um uh, that's the drainage. Those are the pipes on a property we live. I decided to to uh, draw them like this. So <laughs> uh, one of the most fun uh, drawings about six feet long too. One of the most fun drawings. Kind of feel like it's a mind map. <laughs> it's like... Yeah, it's, it just shows all the hose bibs and where all the pipes go. So it was more of a just a fun, fun fact, factual but fun drawing. Yeah. And these are, so these books, so there's the fake district book, but what about these other books? Are these available or? Yeah, well, are they available? <laughs> They've all been made, uh, but none have been, Pub Theory is coming out soon. It's ready to, you'll be seeing that on my website or wherever. Oh, good. We're 
Um, that's how having a pub every half mile will save civilization. Um, then 10 Days of Spain, some books like that are these sketchbooks. I have a couple of different ones from France, too. Um, and a lot of these I just did for my kids in, in some way uh, growing up or just and then kept drawing books. I, I, I guess I I think I have about 50 of these out in some way and have sold it at at, at uh, you know, outdoor fairs and markets and oh, stuff. And um, so I just, I also want to say that we're almost, we're at time. So I just uh, also want to say that your book is available on your website. And you also, if you go to the website, there's a map that does show you, and you can do a little walking tour of um, Jeff's built fabulous buildings if you're in Santa Barbara for a weekend. Um, and I guess that's it. This has been really fabulous. Thank you so much, Jeff, for being with us. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it very much. Yep. And I'll um, hopefully see you soon. Great. Stop by. Okay. Thanks. Take care, everybody. Have a great Friday. Thanks.